You know, 2021 is an interesting year for TVs because the performance and availability of last year's model TVs make them a great alternative to the ones released this year. So in this video, we'll be comparing the 2021 Samsung Q90A Neo QLED with its mini LED backlight system to last year's LG C10 OLED to see just how well this year's fancy new QLED compares to last year's OLED. Stick around. Hey guys, it's the Villaman here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech. And today's TV comparison will be a bit different from the others I've done where I'll be comparing one of this year's model TVs to last year's. And to do the comparison, I'll be using my Panasonic UB820 Blu-ray player as well as a Spears & Munsell benchmark disc with an output set to 10,000 nits. Crazy high, yes, I know, but that's the whole point. That way both TVs will have their fair deal of highlights to tone map above their natively supported brightness. I'll also be using some HDR videos of course, so let's get into it. First up is a test of tone mapping using this contrast test where each rectangle gets progressively brighter and the output is set to 10,000 nits so each TV will have to tone map the details above its natively supported brightness. Here we see the C10 doing a really good job with its tone mapping where there is ample separation in the brightness of each section. The Q90A does a pretty good job as well but the last two sections aren't as clearly defined as they are in the C10. In the tunnel test, it's more of the same where the C10 tone maps all the details on screen up to the brightest level while the Q90A has some trouble with the brightest sections. Now we'll test luminance loading using a bright window which gets progressively larger. And on the QLED we see where the brightness fluctuates as different backlight zones are engaged and as the OLED maintains its brightness as the window gets larger, at its largest point we can see where ABL kicks in. The fluctuations of each TV is much easier to see if we speed up the footage. The winner here is the OLED with its better tone mapping capabilities. Now let's move on to motion handling using horizontally scrolling text, symbols and images. Without any motion handling enabled, the text is illegible on both TVs, especially the fastest moving elements on the lower part of the screen. After enabling the blur reduction feature on both TVs, both the text and the images become a lot more legible and the motion a lot smoother. This would be great for things like sports. But we can see where there is some artifacting on the edges of objects on both the C10 and the QN98, though the C10 has more picture anomalies. Next up is the running peppers test and we can see that this creates strutter on both TVs, but additionally on the QLED, we see where there's some blooming around the peppers as they're a bright object on a dark background. Enabling the deep blur and the jitter setting on both TVs fixes this but we can see on the QLED where there is a bit of darkness on the leading edges of the objects which isn't present on the OLED. The backlight on the QLED seemingly can't react fast enough. Both TVs handle motion interpolation really well for content with 3-2 pulldown which appears smooth and without issues like jitter. This one goes to the QLED. Now let's move on to a test of backlight performance and low stimulus content. And in the first test we can see where the C10 does a lot better than the QLED does where you can see the diagonal lines present which aren't present on the QLED because of the black crush happening. The same is true for these 4% and less gray slides as well as the checkerboard pattern behind them which for the most part are not present on the QLED except for the brightest elements. We'll move on to the grid pattern which consists of many bright dots on a black background and on the QLED it's not as bright as the OLED which is interesting since the QLED has a higher peak brightness than the OLED does but because of some aggressive backlight management the dots aren't as bright on the QLED as they are on the OLED. Next we'll move on to my custom full array local dimming HDR backlight test and since the OLED does not have a backlight it will do extremely 
extremely well on this test but at the beginning of the test both TVs exhibit some judder as the bright square moves across the screen but in the case of the QLED we can see where each backlight zone is activated as the dot moves across the screen. The QN90A has 44 horizontal and 18 vertical zones for a total of 792 local dimming zones and although they're a significant increase over the 2020 QN90T there is still some blooming. Next is a notoriously difficult test for a full array local dimming TV, the Starfield test. Now this has multiple bright elements on a dark background and in the case of the QLED we can see where there is some black crush where the stars aren't as bright as they are on the OLED and also the test begins later and ends sooner than it does on the OLED. Also, as the quantity and brightness of the stars on the screen increases, there is a noticeable amount of blooming on the QN90A. The OLED wins this one. In the next quantization artifacts test where we test how both TVs handle 8-bit and 10-bit gradients to see if there is any posterization or steps as the gradients progress, we can see that both TVs have some posterization in the 8-bit source while they both have a pretty smooth 10-bit gradient. Though the OLED handles chroma blue better than the Samsung does and the Samsung handles chroma red better than the OLED does. They both do a pretty good job on the 10 bit source though. Next is a test of panel uniformity and input lag, not at the same time. And using a full field grade test we can see that both screens look pretty clean. There is no issues with screen door effect or dirty screen effect. If you've seen any such issues it's been brought on by the camera. However the QLED does have some vignetting on the corners which is not present on the OLED. In fact the corners of the OLED appear brighter than the other parts of the screen. Using this time sync test to test the input lag of both TVs, we can see that they have very similar input lag. There is a minimal difference between them. So in this case, it's a tie. And now that we know how they do with test images, let's see how they perform with real video. Time for the picture comparison. Both TVs approach HDR from different ends of the spectrum. The QLED is great at peak brightness and has good contrast while the OLED is great at contrast and has okay peak brightness. And as a result in this video, the QLED would look consistently brighter than the OLED. But in person, your eyes would adjust to the brightness of either TV. The QLED gets so bright in fact that it actually exceeds the dynamic range of the camera so at times the highlight details will be blown out but it does not appear that way in person. The OLED excels at contrast and looks especially good with fine detail like skin textures and surfaces. The contrast performance of the QN90A has certainly improved compared to last year's Q90T but it's still not as contrasty as the OLED which has really impressive contrast. Now let's compare them even closer.
So what do you think of those results? It's interesting, right? The OLED one, the tone mapping test, as well as the combined backlight and low stimulus test, but the QLED one motion handling, and there was a tie for the combined banding and input lag test. Now, I think last year's OLED TVs present a very good value proposition because they have such great performance and they're several hundred dollars less than this year's TVs. Now, from everything I've seen from the QN90A, it is a definite improvement from last year's Q90T, that's without question. And one thing to note is that although OLED TV manufacturers have taken steps to minimize and mitigate the possibility of burning, it is still a possibility. And there are some people who never want to have to worry about that. So a QLED TV would be the best choice for them. But beyond that is a question of the actual room that you're watching the TV in. Now, if you're watching in a brightly lit room, then a QLED would be the better option for you because of its better anti-reflective coating as well as higher peak brightness. So it would do very well in a brightly lit room. The OLED does okay in a brightly lit room, but definitely not as well as a QLED because it has a lot more reflection and it just doesn't get as bright. And of course, both TVs can adjust their brightness for a dimly lit room, so that's typically not a problem, but the OLED will look better in a light controlled room because of its better contrast and the resulting higher perceived saturation. If you like apps and streaming content, then the Samsung again is the better option because Tizen has a better abundance of apps than LG's WebOS does. That's just always been true and it continues to be true. Let me know in the comments which TV you thought one each section. The HDR video portion is a bit more subjective, so let me know in the comments which TV you thought won that section. Personally, I preferred the more contrasty and punchy picture of the OLED, but some of you out there may prefer the HDR pop of the QLED. Let me know in the comments which one you are. And since we're talking about last year's model TVs in this video, I'll also be comparing the QN98 to the Q90T as well to see just how well it has improved since last year. So definitely stick around for that and make sure to subscribe for that video as well as the comparison to the LG C1 OLED and the comparison of the C10 and C1 OLEDs. A lot of comparisons. June is definitely TV comparison month. Oh, and don't forget to check out the merch store for the awesome t-shirts you saw me wear in this video. This one and that one. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching and until next time, this has been your friend the neighborhood villa man saying be safe and peace.